around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Omaha's longer, stronger hospital insurance. Modern hospital insurance that's right for you. Single men and women, entire families, even senior citizens, no matter how old, can be protected by Mutual of Omaha hospital insurance. Here's what you need. You need modern insurance to help meet today's higher costs. Longer, stronger hospital insurance by Mutual Benefit Health and Accident Association. Call your local Mutual of Omaha agent in the yellow pages. Or write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska, for information on plans available in your state. And remember this. You can save money when you add Mutual of Omaha long-term coverage to your group insurance. The savings you make depend on your age and the type of group insurance you have. Write for details to Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> Marshal Dillon. Oh, hello, Major Randall. Marshal, I want to talk to you about last Saturday's affair. Oh, well, Saturday was a pretty lively day around here, Major. Which affair do you mean? You surprised me, Marshal. Two United States Army soldiers were murdered while driving a supply wagon from here to Fort Dodge. A government payroll was stolen, and you seem to have taken no interest in the matter. Oh, now, Major, protecting the Army isn't exactly my job. The Army can protect itself. Well, if that's true, Major, how come there were only two soldiers carrying your payroll? You've got plenty of men out there and plenty of guns. Where were they? On maneuvers. On maneuvers? In my command, Marshal, troops remain in garrison as little as possible. There are only five men left behind this time. And then you were asking for trouble, Major, knowing that there was a payroll coming in. The arrival of the payroll was secret. Even the two men carrying it didn't know what it was. Well, the word must have got out somehow. Obviously. What I want to know is what you intend doing about this crime. Nothing. Nothing? If I knew who did it, I'd make the arrest. But I don't, so there's nothing I can do. I see. Well, Marshal, I regard this crime as a demonstration of your inability to control these Dodge City ruffians. Therefore, I shall do it myself. How's that, Major? If no arrests are made in this matter, I'll give these bad men of yours a taste of martial law. We'll see how they like that. I wouldn't try that if I were you. These streets will be patrolled 24 hours a day. Now, you listen to me, Major. You don't know these men. I'm sure, there are some bad ones here, but most of them are just wild. Free and wild. But you run the army in here, and they'll all fight. <laughs> Let them. You know, Major, your job is like mine, to keep the peace, not to start trouble. Save your advice, Marshal. Then there'll be trouble, Major. Bad trouble. Nonetheless, the army will take over within the week. Or before, if there are any more crimes committed against it. Good day, Marshal. Hey, Marshal. Come here. Yeah, what is it, Shiloh? There's talk of Dodge being run by the Army, Marshal. So? So I don't like it. I and most of the men here got out back in 65. We had all the army we want. Yeah, I know that. Maybe things will work out, though. And if they don't work out, which side are you fighting on, Dylan? Where do you stand? I'm hired to keep the peace, Shiloh, not to answer fool questions. You calling me a fool? Well, see it. You're drunk, Shiloh. You telling me I'm drunk, Marshal? I'll show you how drunk I am. Oh. Now, when he comes around, you tell him that I took his gun. He can get it back first thing in the morning. And if he objects to that, you tell him to look me up and I'll throw him in jail. Must be 
be out of town. As a matter of fact, she is. Went back to St. Louis for the week. So why? The only time you come to visit me. Sit down, man. I'll fix your toddy. Oh, thanks. You thank me best by buying a drink at the bar downstairs once in a while instead of spending all your time at the Long Branch. <laughs> why should I buy whiskey? I get better whiskey for free up here. Matt, you ought to get yourself a girl. Oh, no, Kate, don't start on Kitty with me. Oh, thank you. All right, then, someone else. Someone like, say, Connie Dell. Yeah, there's a real pretty girl. Spirited, too. I'm not looking for a wife, Kate. Connie's been dancing here about uh, three, four weeks. But every time you come in, I notice she keeps one eye on you. There's a lot of fire in that girl, Matt. Sure, Kate, sure. I think she spends so much time with that corporal from the fort just to try to get a raise out of you. Oh, you're sure a conniving old woman, Kate. You're just no good at all. Yeah, you're going to say worse than that. <laughs> what do you mean? I told Connie she could come have a drink with us next time you showed. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, all right, if it pleases you. It does. She's just down the hall. Connie? Yes? There's fresh cigars in that box by your chair, Matt. Had them brought in by the railroad all the way from St. Louis. Good evening, Miss Kate. Come on in, Connie. I've corralled the marshal for you. Sit down and I'll fix you a drink. <laughs> Don't you let her talk bother you, Connie. I won't, Marshal. Here you are, Connie. Oh, thank you, Miss Kate. Well, good luck. Yeah, good luck to you. I guess a, a profession like yours means you've always got some kind of trouble, doesn't it? Oh, most always, yeah. Like this army business now. Yeah. The civilians downstairs are in a pretty mean mood about it. Will it be bad, Marshal? Well, that depends, Connie. On what? If Major Randall finds out who killed and robbed those two soldiers, he might calm down a little bit. Are you going to help him? Oh, how can I? Only a soldier could have passed the word about that payroll money coming in. No, I figure it's this way, Matt. The Major's in trouble, and he's trying to cover it up by threatening to take over Dodge. Oh, any more difficulties, and he'll do it, too. Hey, Connie, your corporal been in. Oh, he left a while ago. What does he say? How do the soldiers feel about all this? Well, I, I don't think they want to mix it with all these buffalo hunters and the like, but... Miss Case, he's not my corporal. He's just a lonely kid. <laughs> all right. It seems like he spends more time here than at the fort. How does he manage it? Well, they made him a clerk, a sort of a bookkeeper. His time's pretty much his own. He's lucky. It's a good safe job, too. I suppose it is. Well, I, I'd better get back. Now that we've met, Marshal, you might stop and buy me a drink the next time you come in. Oh, it'd be a pleasure, Miss Connie. Good night, Marshal. Thanks, Miss Kane. Good night. Well, Matt... Uh, Kate, what's the name of this corporal that's been sniffing around? Oh, well, that's a funny thing. I honestly don't know. Well, then find out for me, will you? If you want me to. In the meantime, let me warm that toddy for you. Yes, sir. But it's just like everybody's holding his juice for the army. If it comes quiet and mean, Mr. Dillon, that's what it is. Quiet and mean. Yeah. All right, Chester, you go on to bed. I'll stay around for a while longer. All right, sir. Uh, first thing in the morning, I want you to go to the telegraph office and send a message to the sheriff up in Hayes City for me, though. Yes, sir, that'd be Mr. Hickok, wouldn't it? Yeah. You ask Bill to send me all the information he can about a dance hall girl called Connie Dell. She left there about a month ago. Honey, Dale. Mm. Uh, yes, sir, I'll do it, Mr. Dale. You bring me the answer as soon as it comes, huh? Oh, we ought to have it by tomorrow evening. Well, I hope so. Good night, Chester. Good night, Mr. Dillon. I got it. Come in at 7 o'clock. Here you are. Oh, thanks, Chester. Uh, What's it say? <laughs> don't you know already? No, I don't. 
Old Charlie wrote it out, sealed it up, and never told me nothing. Now, here's what it says. Connie Bell worked Golden Horn Bar here. Left about a month ago with a stranger called Billy Grounds. Nothing against girl, but believe Grounds a wild one. Hasn't anybody shot you yet? <laughs> Regards, Hickok. Mm, what's that? Well, I don't know, Chester. I don't quite know. Uh, tell you what, you go over and ask Big Kate if she's heard anything about this Billy Grounds, huh? Come on, Chester. Right down there by the alley. Yeah. witnesses to this? I'll let anybody see it. I want to know who killed this man. Maybe nobody did see it, Marshal. Yeah, and maybe nobody cares much about it anyway. Just a soldier. Yeah. All right, you men, I'm telling you this. If I don't find out who shot this man, the army will move in here for sure. Well, uh, not the whole army, Marshal. They won't all move in. Why not, boys? My Sharp's rifle killed Bull Buffalo 200 yards. I reckon it'll kill uh, soldiers uh, at three. Uh, hello, Max. <laughs> well, what have we got this time? Oh. Uh-oh. Soldier. Yeah. Uh, he needs an autopsy just like anybody else. Uh, where's the man that shot him? He hurt, maybe? Take a look, Doc. He isn't even armed. This isn't a shooting. This is a murder. You're right. Oh, well, I'll, I'll get him up to my office. Here, would you give me a hand, somebody? Chester. Yes, sir? I'm riding out to Fort Dodge right now. Well, Marshal is back. Well, what the major say, Marshal? Huh? I can see them soldiers now, all in a bunch, just like a stand of buffalo. They're not coming, Boaz. The major's going to hold off for 48 oh, hours. Oh, now, Marshal, you didn't go and spoil our fun. I heard Doc Adams was in here. Where is he? Uh, down there, down there in the bar. Yeah. Oh, he made a ring. Back down. Hello, Doc. Oh, oh, hello, Mac. Uh, Timothy, boy's name was Bone, according to the letter I found on him. Uh, anything else? Yes, I dug a couple of slugs out of them. Funny thing, too, man. I, I hadn't happened on a lead like this in 65. What do you mean? I swear that boy was shot with a cavalry pistol. Uh, I'll see you later, Doc. Sure, man. You're a dusty-looking peacemaker, Matt. You want a drink? No, no, Kate. I got work to do. Just to see you. He did. Well. Matt, I get my information through the girls, and they get it from the men that grow careless and lose tongue on whiskey. And some of it's true, and some is bound to be just taught. I'll wait it out. Connie's been seen riding out at night toward the Arkansas, down by Brandy Bend. Oh, what for? I don't know. Would be this fellow Billy Grounds. Yeah. His name's never been mentioned around here. My guess is he's never been in town. Anything else? One thing. Corporal Bowers and Connie went for a ride one night. When? Night before that payroll was robbed. Yeah, that figures. Where's Connie now? With Delmonico's eating a steak. It's kind of late for dinner, isn't it? He works late. Matt. Yeah. Next girl I steer you into, I'll pull her fangs first. No, Kate. I like it better this way. Good evening, Connie. Well, this is a surprise, Marshal. Mind if I sit on? Of course. You, uh, sure Corporal Bowers won't mind? Uh, don't be silly. Anyways, at the fort. What time did he leave, Connie? I don't know. About seven, I think. Why? Anybody with him? Some private called Bone. What is this, Marshal? 
A bone was shot before he got out of Dodge, and I think I know who did it. Oh. I heard about the shooting, but I, I didn't know it was bone. Marshal, you think Bowers did it, don't you? You know any reason why he should, Connie? Well, no, he and, and Bone were friends, worked in the bookkeeping office together. I see. Tell me, Connie, uh, Bowers say much about his job there, what he does and all? No, Marshal, he never talked about it. Handle expenses for supplies and the like, figure out the payroll. I don't he... know. Bowers would be in a good spot to know when to expect payroll money in, wouldn't he? Even when it was kept secret. You'd have to ask him, Marshal. I don't know anything about the Army. But uh, this isn't why you found me here, is it? No, of course not, Connie. I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, you look real pretty tonight. Why, thank you, Marshal. You really mean it? Sure I do. I have to work late tonight, but I can get off tomorrow evening. Marshal, would you would you go for a ride with me? There'll be a moon. But where would we ride to, Connie? I don't know anywhere. Maybe along the Arkansas. I know it. Let's ride down toward Brandy Bend. All right, Connie. We'll ride down toward Brandy Bend. Ah, uh, thanks, Chester, but it wouldn't help. I'm riding into an ambush. It'll be over fast. Real fast. All right, that's where you want it. That's the way it's got to be. As soon as I leave with Connie Dell, I want you to ride out to Fort Dodge and see the Major. What about? Tell him to arrest Corporal Bowers for the murder of Private Bone. I think Bone found out where the leak about that shipment of payroll money came from, and Bowers had to shut him up. The Major won't like that, will he? You tell him I'll prove it. Anyway, I think Bowers will confess fast enough when the time comes. Well, when will that be, Mr. Dillon? When I get back to town with Billy Grounds, you better get started for the fort soon. Uh, yes, sir. Evening, Marshal. Ah, uh, hello, Shiloh. I feel another drunk coming on, Marshal. Well, then check your guns back there with Chester. What if the Army comes tonight? I'll need my gun. Then stay sober. But if the army don't come, I'll have stayed sober for nothing. Well, every man's got his problem, Shiloh. But if I see you drunk and wearing your guns, you're going to wake up brokenhearted in jail tomorrow. Some night, I'm going to get drunk enough to draw on you, Marshal. Oh? Huh? Then some night you're going to die, Shiloh. Marshal. Oh, hello, Connie. I got off a little early. Shall we go now? Uh, Any time. I keep my horse at the National. Uh, meet you at the edge of town. Oh? <laughs> you ashamed to be seen with me? <laughs> oh, no, Marshal, but... Well, you know how people talk. Sure. All right, I'll wait for you to sound the trail. I'll hurry. <laughs> We've come pretty fast, Connie. You want to get on for a minute? All right. We'll let the horses blow a little, and then we'll move on. There we go. You, uh... You nervous, Connie? Well, no, why? Well, is there something on your mind? No, of course not. Why should there be? Well, I don't know. You tell me. It's nothing, Marshal, really. Let me ask you something, Connie. Did you ever see a man killed? What? Why'd you say that? Well, did you? Yes, once in the saloon. Tell me, did he have a fair chance? Well, yes, he, he even drew first. Now, then you never saw a man shot on the back or uh, ambushed. What do you mean, Marshal? Well, I just think it kind of... Goes against your grain, Connie, the idea of a man being killed without a fair chance. Marshal. Down by the river, near Brandy Bend, Billy Grounds is waiting to shoot me in the back. Then why did you come, Marshal? That's my job. I don't know how, but I, 
I suppose you know about everything. I think so. What are you going to do? Tony, unless I made a bad mistake about you, I think you're going to let me have a fair chance at him somehow. Why should I? What does it mean to me? I don't know, Connie. But you think about it. You think about it all the way to Brandy Bend. Now, come on, let's ride. Make a nice camp down here. Plenty of wood. Get your water right out of the yard, Kansas. Don't you think, Connie? Man could hide out for a long time down here. Marshal. He could be safe here, even while the army was trying to move into Dodge. A lot of men were being killed back there. It's peaceful here. And quiet. Marshal, I can't do it. All right, then tell me, Connie. There's a big cottonwood up ahead on the left. Yeah, I see it. All right, just keep moving. Now, when we get there, I'm going to ride fast. I'll hang onto the offside of my horse for cover, and when I start, you turn around and get back out of gunfire, huh? Yeah, sure is pretty down here, Connie. Maybe someday we can come down and go fishing, huh? The river's full of catfish. You ever eat a catfish, Denny? Oh, it can be mighty good if they're small enough. Go on back, Connie! Where the money is. Then you can take me back to Dodge. To jail. <laughs> All right, Connie. But you won't be in jail for long. You have my word for that. Not for long. Let's go, Marshal. Virginia Gregg, Jack Moyles, Barney Phillips, and Lawrence Dobkin. 